the Bethany First Baptist Church, and this is our Wednesday evening Bible study. Amen, amen. We are going to discuss tonight from the book of 2 Kings. It's going to be the sixth chapter. We're going to teach from verses 1 through 7. And for a subject, we're going to learn a little bit more about growth and unity and godly leadership. When you're there, say amen. You have Second Kings? Six. I need a reader. I have a volunteer reader that will do all six verses. One through seven, I'm sorry. Thank you, Sister Claire. Second Kings six, one through seven. Read it loud and slow for us if you would please. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man of thee, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was fell, but as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he shipped him the plate. And he cut down the stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand. All right. Thank you, Sister Claire. Who has a King James? I want verse six from King James. Give me verse six. Pick it up for who? Yourself. 
for yourself. So he, where is this he? The man the, uh, the, uh, oh, no, so the he, cried, he, cried a lot he reached time. out his hand and took it. Have we identified all the persons in this last one? We have a man of God. We have the person who lost the axe head. Now remember, we have for a subject growth and unity and godly leadership. Who is this man of God we're talking about? Read your Bibles now. I'm not asking anybody to memorize anything. Who is the man of God? In verse 1, verse 1, who is this particular man of God? Elijah. Elijah. And who are the other players in the story? The sons of who? The sons of the prophet. Anybody know what that term means when they say the sons of the prophet? Were all of these Elijah's children? Natural children? No. Somebody talk to me. No. We got the answer right here. They were not. Some texts render the school of the prophets. Some say the guild of the prophets came to him. I had to look this up. It is like a classroom. These are his students. Absolutely. These are his students. What is the man of God doing with these students? They refer to him in one passage as master. Who was Elisha? And who was his earthly master? Elijah. Say it a little bit loud. Come on, y'all. Elijah. Hear y'all? Okay. Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. Elijah. Now, if we went back to 2 Kings and the second chapter, we would see these are the same group, they identified with the same group, who asked Elijah when his master was born, did he take them? He said, do you not know? They came to him, the same school of the prophets, or sons of the prophets. And they asked him, do you not know that your master will be taken from you today? That's when he was going up in that chair. So I wanted to go back and identify him. I say, these are not his sons. These are students. What was the man of God instructing them in? Remember, we're talking about godly leadership. They were under godly leadership. So under his leadership, what were these sons of the prophets there for? What would you give them? What do you think Elisha would have given them? What did he have to offer these young men? Instructions. Absolutely. Instructions. Counsel. How to be a use word of God. Okay. Um, give, give, me, give me a different way. Yeah, where are you using it? Just to encourage them in their Christ. studies, maybe. Instructions. Studies. Encouragement. How to... How to, uh, How to be a leader. leader yeah, leadership. Right. Leadership. That's what I'm Leadership. These sons of the prophets. Actually, these school of prophets. Make things happen, actually. Make things happen is you will go with that. Now, here's the thing. When we start talking about growth, verse 2. Actually, let's take 6 and 1. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said to Elijah, somebody tell me, what did they say? Is what now? Too small. Why was it too small? Because of what? One word. One word. The G word is in my subject. Growth. Growth. The body or the stool was growing. The place was too small because of growth. So they said to him, let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. These were prophets. They were not like woodsmans or wood choppers, but they were not above doing the work that was needed in order to grow. That's where we want to be. Doing the work that's needed in order to grow under godly leadership requires unity. Second part of that. Here's the unity. Let every
every man, they didn't excuse a single one of them. Everyone had to do the work that was necessary for growth, all right? Let every man take a beam from there. Why, the Jordan was known on its banks were many, many trees, lots of wood and lumber. And when they got there, what were they going to do? They were going to build a larger place for them to not only have the room to grow, but to do well. And the man of God said to them, go. But then, one said, now, and you, just as the people that were with Moses and you, you can't just go running around all willy-nilly without leadership. So they said as a group, please consent to go with who? Your servants. Servant never rises above their master. Jesus himself said that. It's good enough to be like them but you don't rise above it. <clears throat> Godly leadership is very important. So the man of God considers and he says, I will go. So he went with him. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. Spiritual growth. It was first of all worded by mouth. This growth they're talking about. This was a group of spiritual people. They had grown in numbers. More would hear about Elijah, and more of these young prophets would come to learn under his tutorship. So under the godly leadership, it began to grow. And someone had to mouth the fact, to speak it out, that this is too small. What are some things that can be too small for us as believers? It can be a place, it can be a person, it can be a thing. You can say of anything, these shoes are too small. Why? Your feet are grown. You can say of your mentality, I am doing what? Thinking what? Too small. Too small is not always the building. Too small, go with me, can also be in the midst of the church. A minister. <coughs> Pastor is teaching us that we need to go ye therefore. What does that imply? What we are doing right now in the way of witnessing is what? Too, too small. So he, as the man of God, is beginning to encourage us to use the ability that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us would speak forth out of us to cause growth in the body of Christ. Not in the building of Bethany, but in the body Amen. of Christ. Amen. God gives the increase. What do we have to do? Realize that some things that we do for God are what? Too small. Too small. So we understand now, vacant can be too small. The room we're in can be too small. Our attitude that refuses to forgive can be what? Too small. Our traditions that's hindering our ministry can be what? Too small. We have to open up some things in order for God to pour in his best. We have to get rid of some of our old ways in order for God to put in his new thing that he said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Your mind can't grasp the joys, even if I told you. So my mind is too small to rise up to what God is doing, but my spirit that's been ignited by the Holy Spirit has to be willing to be elevated out of the little box and say, God, knock down all four walls and allow me to grow as I go in mission and glory to you. Too small can really hurt. We have to be like these sons of the prophet and say, rise up and get with our pastor who's all ready for this dynamic growth and say, yes, pastor, what I've been doing is too small.
small. It can be a little bit bigger. Okay, I decided I'm gonna come in. I'm just gonna sing in the choir. I have a gift, I can play the piano, but I only want to sing in the choir. Too what? Small. Too small. Too small in your thinking. I like to be on the Ursha board, but you know what? I could probably do something else. But nah, let somebody else do it. What's wrong with our thinking? It's absolutely too small. Now let's go down and look at another lesson we can learn from this act. Skip down to four, verse four. After the man of God consented that he would go, it says they came to the Jordan. See changes. They came to the Jordan, and they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Hmm. Was it his? No. Now, what would have happened if this young man had taken the careless road? Really careless. You got an axe and you're just chopping. It's not your axe and you're just cutting your wood. And all of a sudden, boom, the head falls off of it. You're like, uh-oh, it fell in the water. I know I can't get that back. I guess I'll go sit down under a tree. That's the careless attitude. Why? Each man had taken an axe. Each of the sons of the prophet. It didn't say there was extra axe heads. It didn't say there was a corner store that specialized in hardware and had a whole bunch of axes they could go and buy. This young man, for some reason, could not either afford his own or just flat, not only did he not have one, he may have been poor. I try to do a little study on him. Of course, we cannot know anything except God puts it in his word. I don't like guessing, and there are some commentators who can really fill in the gap. Yes. I didn't see anywhere in God's word that the boy was poor. It just said he had borrowed an axe. For whatever reason, it was not his. Now, Carolus Spirit says, so what, I lost it. I borrowed it, now I don't have it. I guess I'll sit down, I can't work anymore. There's a lesson in that. But instead of taking the careless attitude, this young man realized that what he had lost was not his. It was not his. This speaks of stewardship. How does it speak of stewardship? Let's look at our lives. We come here with nothing. We leave out of here with what? Nothing. All in between is who? Amen. So, do we own anything? We are stewards from our entrance to our exit of everything that God gives us in our life, all the in-between is his. And when we recognize that in the body of Christ, I truly believe we will start to work together in that oneness, realizing I might have a gift, it's still not mine. Sister Juanita has a gift, it's still not hers. So why not work together in the body to the building up of the whole with every gift that we have working to the glory of God, because A to B, entrance to exit, is all his, and you are a steward of it in order to give him glory. So we need to get together and work to that same glory. So this young man says to the master, the man of God, at last, it was not mine. It was not his to lose. He had a stewardship of that axe head, and he was serious about his job. He had to be serious because the axe fell into the water. Most people would say it's going to go down pretty soon, so why should I worry about it? But he went to the man of God, and he needed some instructions on what to do now. Let us never, as a body of believers, 
be afraid of instruction because God is going to allow the flow through his leadership. When our pastor say, I have a vision, I have a word, this is this, this is that, this is what I receive, our job is to get up under him and say, Pastor, tell me what I must do. How can I help? I need you to tell me what that word is so that I can take it and get like a bath and run with it. So the man of God said to him, just tell me where it fell. And he goes over, and God begins to work the supernatural through his leader. He said, stick, please. And he takes the stick, toss, please, tosses it in. And what happens to that heavy iron? It started doing what? It started smoking. But now the man of God, here we go, talking about hands and feet and everybody doing what they should be doing. It was not the man of God's responsibility to reach in there and get it. He simply did what God told him to do after the location was pinpointed. I believe he received a word from God, throw in the stick, I got this. It rose up, and the man of God's next instruction was to the one who had the stewardship of that act. What did he tell him to do? Reach in your hand. Tell him, let's do some work. Let's go to work, church. Reach in your hand and do what? Some say retrieve. Some say get it. Some say pick it up. But the job was that particular steward's job. Now, using the same example as Sister Juanita and I, no matter if he gives us, I can't do hers, she can't do mine. But together, we can do ours, and then the whole is edified. This brings about Christian growth, and it promotes unity to the glory of God, and it speaks of godly leadership from the man of God who's taught us to get together on one accord. I got a vision. Take it and run with it. You do your part. God will have me do it. My part, and all of us doing the part, then the whole is working beautiful. It said the boy reached in his hand and did what? He took it up. You think the work stopped? Or did it keep on going? The work never ceased. Even while one steward seemingly had been sidetracked because he had lost something that was precious, God restored it through using the man of God and said, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to get it back. And I don't believe he missed a step. He got his ax head and just kept on swinging until they got the lumber they needed to do the building. It don't go on and explain all that. But I said, God, there's a reason you put that little bit of story in there. And then he just kind of left it alone. I said, let me see the lesson in that. I came away from that with unity, with fellowship in the body of Christ, with godly leadership in Russia. We have here godly leadership. We have here a child that's been set before us. Reach, evangelize, grow in a knowledge of God. I say let's grab hold of it, take it up, bring it back to ourselves, and get back to work, church. Amen. Any questions? Amen. Uh, any questions? We have any questions? Amen. Do we have some observation or any application? Take it up two or three steps further than where I've gone. We got a few minutes. Any applications we want to have? I, I, um, All right, Sister Honey. My question is, is we see that the accent that rises to the, to the top is, uh -huh. uh, they call it iron, and it is iron. Yeah. Uh, what is the uh, symbolic meaning other than just an accent of the word iron? Okay, and you know what? That's not anything that I would really know. But you do know the heaviness. You know iron doesn't flow. Oh, yes, I know. Amen. Supernatural. It's just a supernatural.
spiritual act that God is sovereign. He's just going to be God. I don't know if there's any significance of the accents. Now, I've heard some preachers, preachers say, don't lose your cutting head. I don't get that out of here. You know, I looked online and I said, I keep seeing this. Everybody want to preach, don't lose your cutting head. I don't want to preach that. God, what are you saying about it? It's not about the acts. Look at the servant who lost the act and what I did to get that back in his hand. The one that had the stewardship of the acts was accountable for it. We have a stewardship. That's the message I got. From A to the entrance to the exit, it is all about our stewardship of what God has given us. He has given us a great charge to keep. And we know the reason behind that, to his glory, that souls might be saved. He doesn't want any of us to perish or be lost. So he uses us in between our entrance and our exit out of this world. He uses us to his glory. Now that's what I saw in it. That's what I saw in it. Someone else, anyone else? It made me think about uh, the exodus of uh, Pharaoh when they uh, wandered in the desert for 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, before my memory certainly ran on this, um, before he actually allowed them to go into the land of Milton County, which was very fortunate. Okay. They had to be stewards of that land. And he could Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. He could not. Could not let that thinking that came out of Pharaoh's house into that. So he had to make them wonder for 40 years to kill off that old thinking. And he did do and that. He did that <laughs> he before did he allowed that. them to go into. That's he what it, that's what it that. made me think uh, of when you speak about the stewardship. So. All right, the stewardship. That's it. That's it. All right, I'm trying to see if I had a question. We looked at why everything was too small. We looked at the suggestion. And we looked at the fact that we have no possessions. We enter with nothing, we leave with nothing. Right. It's just some points. I made myself a sticky note yeah. of what I wanted to cover. I want to make sure I did before we have our prayer circle. Okay, and also I had one other point that says in the closing, uh, we are to note that no one believer in the body of Christ has more than another believer. God is no respecter of persons. You may say, well, I have uh, 10 or 12 gifts. I know somebody that ain't got but one. But here's the thing. God is sovereign. Yeah, yeah. And he gives as he will to yeah, whom yeah. he will. And therefore, your gift is still, don't care if it's 10 or 12 of them, any greater than the person who has one and is ministering in it to the glory of God. It's all the same to God. We need to know that. And he gives the increase as we go about doing what he's asked us yeah. to do. In our obedience, God gives the increase. Yeah. And I believe we're going to see a lot of Christian growth. Um, we're going to get ready for our prayer circle. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think about the reason why, reason why that iron floor. Because God was in it, nothing too hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man couldn't do that. He made anything float. He made anything float. I like that. He'll make it float and float. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. So we're going to have one more from Brother Ralph. Yeah, and if God please come up, we will have our prayer circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold up, hold up. Just a second, brother Ralph. I understand, Elijah. You know, he had a lot of powers. He was in church with God, and he can do a lot of things. And you know, from those things, anything from things pop from him, from him down to earth. Oh, you know, God used him in a powerful way. Right, Elijah, Elijah. Yeah, absolutely right. 